giving everybody some time to get get logged on. And the Bible study, Jeremiah chapter one. Amen. Excuse you, John. Excuse you. Hope y'all enjoy this study. Hey, brother. I enjoyed us studying the 22 chapters of Revelations. I know we got blessed by it. Amen. Pray everybody's been having an awesome week and staying close to God and seeking Him while He may be found. Look at Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah. Sorry, what, what number? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm to the book of Jeremiah, one of the most powerful prophets in the Bible. Amen. Welcome, welcome. Hope everybody had a blessed week. Um, we're praying for everybody uh, during these trying times, of course. We all know we're living in the last days. Uh, we, just, we just got finished studying the, the book of Revelations, which you know, everybody knows that's, that's the times we're living in right now. But, Amen. Um, now God is going to take us on a journey back through other parts of the Bible, and you know, we put it on our heart to, to, to go to Jeremiah, which is one of the most powerful prophets in the Bible. Uh, Jeremiah was chosen as a child, which most of us are. God chose us in the womb to do whatever He has, you know, work for us to do. But it's up to us to accept that calling. And Jeremiah is one of those prophets that actually accepted that, that calling as a child. And so uh, Jeremiah probably had one of the, the hardest, in my opinion, one of the hardest jobs uh, as one of the prophets in the Bible because he had to. Um, come to a nation that, that was turned away from God, that had turned their back on God to, and, and try to get them to repent, which is, again, that's what we're living at right now. So I feel like God is leading us this direction because he's saying he's going to raise up a lot of Jeremiah's in these, you know, these last days to, you know, to, to, save, to save some souls and get some people to turn away from that, their wicked ways, you know what I mean? All this anger and hostility and racism and, um, you know, famine and you know, diseases and things going on. They got, um, you know, I don't know if y'all heard about the sandstorm that's coming from Africa. Um, it's a lot of stuff that's, that's going on at the same time. It's not It's not a coincidence. A lot of people want to try to argue you down and say, hey, it's a coincidence. You know, these things these things happen all the time, but they don't. Amen. You know, not to this magnitude. This storm that's coming is probably, they said it's one of the worst that's happened in, in the last 50 years. So, you know, like I said, just be vigilant. You know what I mean? All the people that follow followers Christ, make sure y'all stay vigilant. Make sure you stay walking in the spirit. The people that are not, you know what I'm saying? Those people that choose to follow those other religions. I'm praying for y'all. You know, I pray that y'all turn away from that stuff because it's, you know, it's, it's idolatry. It's false. Um, they're teaching y'all that hatred is right. That's not I me. Mean, nobody could possibly believe that's true. Um, Amen. There's a lot of facts behind what's going on. You know what I mean? Amen. Y'all just really have to remain vigilant because at the end of the day, this is the days and times we're living in. It's a lot of deception going on. It's a lot of false prophets rising up. It's you know, and just putting the what what they what they want you to hear, or, or turning you away from Jesus. The best thing to do is to get in the Bible for yourself. You got to get in it for yourself. Amen. Don't just don't just sit around and be a hearer, but be a doer of the word. And the only way you can be a doer is you get in the Bible yourself. Amen. I will. God has blessed me to be able to, us to be able to have a ministry and, and to minister to people through the Word of God, and the, the Word of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we've encountered, I, I know I personally encountered a lot of uh, Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, you know, they, they always want to pick, try to pick a, 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 a biblical battle, but they pick one with the wrong person because I walk in the Spirit, and God blesses me to be able to know the Word, and you, know, you, can, you can come with all that stuff to, to somebody that's weak-minded, but I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I'm not here to argue. I'm here Amen. to. I'm, I'm a messenger. God put me here to be a messenger. I'm here to deliver a message, whether you accept it or not. I love you regardless. You know what I mean, it's not. It's not my job to judge you. If you choose to go another direction, I guess on you. If you choose to say that, hey, you know, Jesus was the forced religion on the slaves. You need to do your history, because you know, 
Christianity was around a thousand years before Jesus even got here. So, and it was way before slavery. At the end of the day, the Egyptians were the first Christians. So, at the end of the day, don't be deceived. Don't let these false prophets tell you that you know, there's a religion that only wants one race to go to heaven. Because that's a lot. You know, anybody that believes that, I mean, that's, you, know, you just gotta think. Just take, just take time, time out to think about that. You know what I mean? Amen. It doesn't make sense. Don't, don't take it more than Don't take it. Just think about that you want, you follow a religion that preaches hatred and anger, but then you're supposed to inherit a kingdom of peace and love. That makes no sense. So, at the end of the day, like I say, you got to love even your enemies, you know what I'm saying? Even those Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites or those Pharisees Frankly, that choose so. to get on my page and try to, you know, shoot down the word of God, that's fine. I'm, I'm not here to try to argue with y'all. I have time. I, mean, I love you regardless. I'm going to keep lifting y'all up, keep encouraging y'all, and just pray for y'all to get right with God. I mean, at the end of the day, God is coming back. Beginning, if you know, even if those even those Hebrew Israelite Bibles, they say God came as a man of peace, and that's the truth. The second time, He's not coming like that. He's coming as a man of war. I promise you, everything that doesn't belong to Jesus, He's going to destroy. It. So I would encourage you to get right with God. Amen. Stay away from all this hatred and anger. And love, love, love everybody. Love your enemies. You know, people that persecute you. The Bible says love everybody. So at the end of the day, I don't have any hatred for anybody. Regardless of what y'all want to say or argue is fine. I, I mean, we can have a, a disagreement and not be an argument. I'm not saying that everything is an argument, but Amen. When people start to just blaspheme God and stuff like that. That's why I just cut it off. Cause I, don't, I mean, I don't want to be God to hold me accountable for you stumbling, but because you're, you know, because I continue to hate you. Honestly, at the end of the day, if you, if you want to hear about God, I'll talk to you. If not, at the end of the day, I'm going to pray for you and keep it moving. So, we love y'all. And like I said, we're going to start the Book of Jeremiah, which I'm excited about because. I, you know, I read Jeremiah and just kind of studying all the disciples. Jeremiah was probably the boldest. You know what I'm saying? He had the, probably the hardest job. He was, you know, his life was threatened. Let me cakes, be quiet. Uh, no, no, no problem. You know, his life was threatened. He was thrown in prison for years. Yeah, still, he still, he was still, still on the word of God. Because God said, I'm ne I'll never leave you for nor forsake you. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you all the power that you need to do what I need you to do. And that's to save souls and to turn people away from idolatry and witchcraft and hatred. You know? Amen. I thank God for y'all because I can call, I can call everybody, but um, I'm going to call Daniel Roy every week and wake up, wake up, and pray in the morning and in the afternoon. And we, 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 we reach out to work. Um, God, we reach out to work. Um, just wanted to give a small, a really quick, small testimony before we start. Oh, yeah. When my husband, uh, talking about you know all the hatred if, if you guys notice it's it's a it's a level of evil on this world on the earth right now that is just unheard of if you even reference back to the satanic march that was done uh last sun sunday on father's day okay and then you got the all the shootings that happened in on um, father's day in chicago over 100 was it over 100 104 people shot I think 14 died, and I think out of all of those, I think 11 were kids under the age of 18. A little three-year-old, and I mean other kids too. But, I mean, y'all just have to look at it. While people sitting back not doing anything or not even grabbing a hold of their salvation, evil is rising on the world. And casual Christians will be casualties, in the words of Brother Marcus. You know, because if you just sitting back and you're not doing nothing with your relationship with God, and I mean, come on now. But to the quick testimony, so we went out as a family ministry to show y'all how the evil is upon the earth. But I fear no one but my Lord and Savior and God. So we go down there and we getting ready to get set up. And right when we're getting ready to get set up and people are getting together and stuff, it's a pickup truck that come around the corner doing around, what was he doing, probably around 50, 50 60? Yeah, almost, yeah, he's probably doing 50 or 60 because he... He, he couldn't even make the turn. He almost ran through the gate. That's how fast he was going. And it was it was it was purposeful. It wasn't like, um, you know, you could tell that there was a, it was something that was driving him. That, to, that, that it, it wasn't normal. Right. right. So he, he did about three laps doing you know, doing 100 miles an hour almost. And they say he hit somebody down the street. Which you know, we we want to we're going to keep them in our prayers, obviously. But the whole purpose of us going out there, God, you know, God sent us out there with this ministry to go, you know, to go out to the streets and and to minister to people that don't have a chance to, to hear the word of God. So we were out there setting up, and you know, you know, we were, <clears throat> you know, all excited, and the people were excited, and they were gathering around. And next, you know, this car, big distraction comes from the enemy. Yeah. And that was the devil. That was the best. That was the best that the devil could do, obviously. 
because he came, the guy came around, did two laps, and he was just screaming at us and pointing. And I had no idea what he was saying, but at the end of the day, we just, my wife said the blood of Jesus, and, you know. No, I pleaded the blood of Jesus violently. Violently, you got the. You can't be timid when it comes to pleading the blood of Jesus, and you pleading it over something demonic that's happening. But it was the devil thought that he could run us from down there because he knew breakthroughs were gonna come. My whole point of the testimony is to stay steadfast, stay steadfast, and 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 keep your relationship right with God. Pray and fast. Get in your word. Be on fire for God 100% because he needs to use you in these days that we're living in. He needs to use you fully for the people that's lost it straight away. Yep. If you think that you don't have a job in, in, in what God has for you, an anointing or whatever it may be, the devil is lying to you. The Holy Spirit. The main thing that, like I said, in these end times, the main thing that, that, that the lukewarm Christians are going to, that's going to pull them away from you know, where they already are, even though they... They're not even closer to, as close to God as they think they are. You know, those lukewarm Christians are going to get pulled away by all this stuff that's going on because they, now you're going to the, the enemy's going to trick you into pledging your allegiance to something, you know, besides God because you don't really have a relationship with Him anyway. That's what lukewarm means. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of people right now. You can see it. They say they're Christians, but then they say, okay, I gotta go out here and you know, it's okay if you know if I throw a brick through a window or if I you know take my anger out on somebody because we've been oppressed for so many years or because you know this hatred and anger that I feel. From things that have happened in my in my past, and like I said, I'm the main one. I can tell you, that, you know, from my past experience, I grew up in the streets of Philadelphia. I've lost, you know, when I grew up, it was 19 of us that hung out together. And out of those 19, everybody's dead or in jail except me, because I I, I made a choice to, to follow Christ. And it's yeah. not it wasn't it wasn't even that. God covered me for a long time, even when I was in the streets, because I didn't. It's just you know I got saved when I was 25, you know, and even then I still wasn't all the way living for God. I still was out in the club drinking getting into fights, doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. So, at the end of the day, I'm telling y'all, my, my, I, I know the struggle that all black people are dealing with right now. But don't let that anger, you know, of, of past, what happened with slavery, which was all wrong. Never never will I say that slavery is right, because God, you know, Jesus said, he, he, you know, he never preached on it anybody. So, I, I would never say slavery is right, ever. I agree with everything y'all are saying, but it's just, a way, it's just a way of going about things, you know what I mean? Violence is not the way, anger is not the way, um, you know, Retaliation is not the way. God said, let vengeance be mine. So he's going to, everything that's ever happened to you, God's going to take care of it. Now, the part that people don't understand is you don't have to see the revenge for it, for it to be, for, you know, for it to have happened. God is not necessarily going to allow you to see it. That's not, that's not his, Amen. his plot is not for you to take joy in somebody else's pain. Yeah. But he will take care of it. I, I can assure you that. And like I said, I'm living testimony from the other side where when I used to, you know, steal cars and rob people, you know, one day I stole $100 from somebody. And the next week, I lost a thousand. So, God is going to repay. You know what I'm saying? Anything you do, there's consequences for our actions. So, my thing is, like I said, even the people that right now that that may be on my live right now that don't believe in Jesus or, or they got some questions or whatever, I'm not coming at y'all like I'm judging y'all either, because I'm from you know I'm from that same place that y'all are at. I'm just I'm just encouraging y'all to at least listen, at least listen, at least give give Jesus a try. You know what I mean? Don't don't follow these religions that preach anger and hatred, because I mean that's false. I don't know how anybody can even believe that stuff when they're teaching you that to take by force. There's no word in the Bible that you see Jesus ever once hurt anybody. Amen. He was always loved. He was always, even on, even on his way to the cross, when they were nailing him to the cross, the first thing he looked up to the, to the heavens and said, God, you know, he told his father, forgive him, for they know not what they do. You know, he never once lifted a finger or, or raised his voice to in anger at somebody. Now, I know a lot of the Pharisees that be on our page, they like to throw that scripture out when Jesus flipped over the tables. When Jesus flipped over the table, it had nothing to do with what y'all are talking about. Jesus did that because there were people in, in his father's house turning his father's house into a den of thieves, which what that means is they were using God's name to make a profit, which you see it on TV a lot now. All these televangelists, okay, I'm going to sell this Bible for $200, or I'm going to sell you some blessed oil for $150. That's not what God is about. Amen. So those people, that, 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 those people are going to pay a price too if they don't repent. So don't think that, that that's who Jesus is. Don't let all this stuff that's going around fool you. These people that are doing these hateful things and saying I'm a Christian. It's just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't mean you follow Christ. And it definitely doesn't mean you're going to get into heaven. So don't let them fool you into, into, into not believing in Jesus because of what they do. Amen. Y'all better get it together, man. You don't have time. I have they can't get my prayer child. It's right up there. Oh, yeah. get prayed in. I would have a couple of things to
Thank you, Rachel. Hope you're enjoying it. Who is Rachel? So a young lady I went to school with. Oh, that's good. Amen. Now, like I said, we don't do this for likes. We don't do this for, you know, to, to get more friends or followers. I don't care about that. My popularity is with, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when God put this on our heart to do Bible studies and, you know, do marriage ministry and stuff like that, it was for, it's because, you know, God told me that I, this is where I pulled you out of something for a reason. I didn't pull you out for yourself. I pulled you out for my use, you know what I mean? I pulled you all out so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. You know what I mean? We went to, we did premarital counseling um, before we got married, and I, I'm just going to let y'all know it's a blessing to do that because it, you, know, you don't have to have a problem to go to marriage counseling or premarital counseling. It actually helps because it eliminates a lot of problems that you would deal with. So, um, but, but when God blessed us with these ministries, it wasn't for us. It wasn't even, it wasn't even something that, it, honestly, that I wanted to do because I don't even like getting on, you know, live and doing things because people, I feel like people think that you're trying to, you know, which most people do when they get on live, they're trying to get more, they're trying to get that attention, which I don't, I don't care about that attention. All I care about is your soul, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, when I get out there in these streets, I'm not worried about my life, I'm not worried about anything, but that one person I might be able to affect, that, you know, that will get their life to Christ. And, you know, God will, you know, the angels will smile and God will be happy. Amen. At the end of the day, you know, the Bible says, we all going to suffer persecution for Christ when you pick up your cross and follow Christ. Amen. So I'm already prepared for all that. I'm okay with whatever the consequences are, whatever, you know, whatever this world has to offer, because the Bible says you're, supposed to, you're not supposed to fear man who can just kill your body. But you're supposed Amen. to fear God who can kill your body and your soul. With and that's why, then, exactly. why, then, uh, why, I, why, I, the things about it, um, the, I, 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 why, I got a Bible for, I got a Bible. Now, I, I like to read every day because, and the whole, the Holy Spirit put on my heart, and I like, I like to have a Bible, and I like to have the Holy Spirit, and I like to pray, I like to pray every morning and afternoon. I, I I I woke up I wake up and did, uh, I wake up this and uh, like I didn't have a refresh refresh for a minute. Amen. Mm -hmm. Refresh in our mind. Mm -hmm. Every time you open God's word, Amen. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get prayed in. We don't want to keep y'all too long. We're just gonna uh, get prayed in and go. We're gonna do chapter one of Jeremiah. If you got your Bible, you wanna follow on. That's great. If not, you wanna take notes. I encourage you to just go back and study. So I guarantee you, if you if you, if, you, you know, if you truly follow Christ and you're walking in the Spirit, you're going to start seeing the Jeremiah's of this generation. The, ones, the, same, the Bible says, as, as, a, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be. So the same prophets that were in the beginning, God's going to start raising those same type of people up in, the, in these last days. And Jeremiah, was, as a boy, was more powerful than a lot of these pastors are today. You know what I'm saying? He, he was able to save a whole nation, pretty much. Well, not him, but you know, he was able to use the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to turn, you know, get people to turn back from what they were doing. Idolatry, witchcraft, all those things that they were doing back in the, you know, in the biblical days, which is a lot of that happening now. So. It's, it's, it's very prophetic. But it's the same thing that's happening now. Ain't nothing exactly. new. It's, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> the world is just a mirror. Everything that happened in the beginning is going to happen in the end. So, um, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed it because I did. I, you know, I, I, I somewhat half, well, not halfway through. I've gotten a lot of way through Jeremiah, but I'm, I'm, I've, I've actually read it before and we actually watched the movie. I, I said, you know, if you're a movie person and you don't like to read, go watch the movie Jeremiah. I guarantee you that's, man, that, that movie will inspire you to do something. Wow, it had you fired up in the minute though. Still yeah. getting your word. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we watch the movie. Don't get the word. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. Can I pray? No, I'm going to pray. I can't pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for this wonderful Bible study that you are restoring upon your people. Decrease us and increase you at all times. We thank you, Lord, for blessing the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit to be present and for the teachings that go out as you see fit. We thank you for understanding of your word right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for providing understanding to the others that are at home. We thank you for the softened hearts. We thank you for them continuing to just follow after you or either give their life to you or, or answer that knock that you're knocking on the heart of their, the door of their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now for continuing to watch over us and to guide us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in these days we're living in. But we want to be stay connected to you, for you're the vine, we are the branches. And apart from you, we can do nothing. And we just thank you, Lord, because without you, we're nothing. All these things we pray in Jesus Christ's Nazareth name. Amen. 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 For any of y'all ladies watching, that might want to, might be wondering what she's doing. Like in the Bible, it says. Hold my hair up. 
Bible, the Bible, the, the, in the biblical days, women covered, women covered their heads whenever they prayed. And, you know, they were encouraged to do that because there's you know, spiritual principalities and things that women, you know, women are subject to when they don't cover their head. Like men are not required to do that. But, right. Um, so that's something else we can talk about another, another time. So we're gonna go get into Jeremiah chapter one. There's a uh, oh, nineteen verses. Chill, 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 chill. Oh, I'm hungry. I know, but just chill out. You're gonna read. You always read. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do one through, one through ten. One through ten. Jeremiah, the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter one, the first first section is called the prophet Jeremiah. Basically, just kind of give you a rundown of who Jeremiah was. When God first called him as a child. Okay. Good? Yeah. All right, it says The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Antioch in the land of Benjamin. Oh, but I need to get my bigger Bible. To, to, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of uh, Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah in the thirteenth year of his reign. Um, it came also in the days of Jeremiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. Um, well, I read yours, huh? Hey! Hey! Said the calling of Jeremiah. It says then the word of the Lord came unto unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I have ordained thee a prophet unto the uh, unto the nations. Then said I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. So basically, right there, Jeremiah is kind of saying, God, I can't do what you ask me to do because I'm just a kid. Um, but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send, send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. But not, uh, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you, to, to deliver you, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Amen. Amen. Moreover, the word, yes, we have. I'll pick the verse for you to read just a second. You can get your Bible and read. You can read nineteen and twenty. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it's facing, it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth on all inhabitants of the land. For behold, I am calling all families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come and see one each seat. They shall come and each one set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem against all, against all its walls all around and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me burned incense to other gods, and worshiped the works of their own hands. My Lord. Hmm. That's a lot what's going on right now. Right, let, me stop. Let, me, let me just touch on that right quick, because that's one of the scriptures that God had me highlight. And actually, I think I sent it out yesterday. But where it says, And I will utter my judgment against thee, against them touching all their wickedness. That's, that's talking about today, what's happening right now. All the stuff that's going on, God is pouring out. This is just the beginning of his judgment. This is not even the bad part. Mm -hmm. This is all. This is all, you know all that idolatry and witchcraft and 
America has turned away from God, it's supposed to be having been, you know, founded on, you know, the Word of God and all that stuff. God, and they have totally turned away from God. I don't know if y'all saw a lot of the uh, reports today, like they're talking about taking taking out statues of Jesus, and they've already pretty much shut down all the churches, and, and pretty soon they're going after the, all the people with the Bibles. I promise you, this is all stuff that guys talking about right here. He was talking to Jeremiah about going to tell people to stop doing what they're doing and turn away from all that stuff. Amen. Amen. Therefore, prepare yourself and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests. Excuse me, I'm to deliver you. To deliver you. Amen. Amen. That's another scripture that you know, the Lord had me to highlight. Because that's what he's, he's he's trying to let us know as, as disciples of Christ. If you're a true follower of Christ, you, you do have a calling on your life. I don't care what you think. Everybody, The Bible says everybody's called and only few are chosen. And that, that Being chosen depends on you whether you accept your calling. Free will. Right here, yeah, amen. Free will. Right here God is saying that um, it says that when you go out and preach his word, they're going to fight against you. They meaning principalities, spiritual, you know, spirit, spiritual principalities and rules of darkness, which they're going to come through people. They always, you know, they can't, they're not going to confront you. So they're going to go through, they're going to work through other people, people that are allowing them to use them, whatever, people that work in darkness, people that perform witchcraft, which is, you know, drugs is a form of witchcraft. Alcohol is a form of witchcraft. Amen. And those things that they said, you know, they will fight against you, but they will not prevail for I'm with you. So we got to understand as believers, when we go out to preach his word, just like my wife was telling our testimony in the beginning, like initially in our flesh was thinking, okay, this dude gonna hit somebody, he's gonna hit one of us. But then, then we had to think about it, we had to think about the guy that we served. Well, he, <laughs> when he sent us out there on a mission, like he told he told Jeremiah, I'm not gonna leave you. I'm Amen. here. So you don't have to worry about their you know being afraid of their faces or nothing else. Because you know, you're you're here to do what I called you to do. And your time is not up until I say it's there. You know what I'm saying? That's why people believers gotta realize. I know we all had this fear about okay, I don't want to stand in front of a crowd of people that don't believe. What if somebody gets mad? What if somebody throws something? You know, all those stuff. That's all the things that ran through my mind when God you know, gave us this assignment. I'm like, you want us to go out in the streets where there's people that don't believe, there's people that are, you know, that are high, there's people that are, you know, have addictions, and there's, you know, people out there that, are, you know, that, to be honest with you, they're possessed by demons. Some of them are. And some of them have come up to us and told us that. I need you to pray for us. I need you to lay hands on me. I, need, I really need help. And one guy that was in, in a wheelchair in tears, like, I need you to get me, to, I need to get to a church somewhere because I don't know how much longer I'm gonna last. You know, stuff like that. That's that. That's confirmation of why God sent us out there. Because I had no idea what we were in for. I was going out there thinking we're gonna talk to three or four people, and that's it. Amen. There's probably what a hundred people lined up out there to, to hear just to hear the word of God because they they don't get to hear it on the regular. So you know, I, I I'm very humbled and honored that God would you know, pick me. He didn't pick me. You know, pick me because I'm special. He picked me because he picked a lot of people. I just decided that I'm going to accept what, you know whatever He has for me because I know there's a reward. It's not, you know, it's not just about me. It's about getting other souls saved. I can't just think about myself. You know, there's other people out here that need Jesus. You know, there's people that don't believe in Jesus that need that need even more than the people that do that somewhat believe in Jesus. You know, and, I'm, and I'm willing to stand in front of them. I'm willing to take the you know, criticism, the cousin out, or whatever they're going to bring. You know, if it means getting the word that's on that seed, you know, it's okay. Amen. I've been cussed out I don't know how many times this month on, on Facebook and unfriended and you know told I was a, you know, I mean, I've been caught all kinds of things. I, I, I really don't even want to get into all of it, but it's just crazy how people, and it only happens when you mention the name Jesus. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but I can get on live right now and throw, a, you know, put the devil horns up and make all kinds of devil emojis and nobody's going to say anything. Not a word. Nobody's going to argue. Nobody's going to get upset. As soon as I say, Jesus loves you, oh Lord, the, the, when I say the demons <laughs> rise up, they get Tell upset. Oh, Jesus is not even a real man. Somebody said Jesus is a, is a false man. Wow. And I, and I truly pray for him. I truly do. Season of blasphemy. Because God, when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back the way he came the first time. And those people that are spitting his name out of their mouth like that, he's going to destroy them. I promise you that. 
You, you read Revelations if you don't believe it. He's coming back on a white horse with, a, with, with fire in his eyes and a sword coming out of his mouth. And he said, anything that's not like me, anything that chose not to serve me or not, chose not to, to, you know, to, to, to believe in my name, I'm going to destroy it. Like I said, that's not to put fear in anybody's heart. If you don't believe, you don't believe. I'm just telling you what the, you know, the Word of God says. Um, we are watchmen on the wall. That's all we are. We're, we're messengers. We don't have any authority, any more authority over anybody than you do. What we're doing is we're just here to, to put that warning out, just like somebody warned us. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm living proof that God is real because I, I got so many testimonies I can give you. you know, I should have been dead. I should have been in prison. I mean, I, I, two times, personally, I can think off the top of my head where I, I should have spent time in prison and didn't spend one day in prison. Not one. And you can't tell me guys not good. You can try to convince anybody else, but you can't convince me. Amen. A couple things I want to say too. Uh, uh, we have to read every day and also read every morning. And you have to stand down for yourself. And truly pray. Truly do repent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, repent amen. every day. That's very important. Amen. That's we got to stand down for ourselves. And lucky. But we are, we got lucky because we didn't get hurt. We're not lucky, we're blessed. We're blessed, we're we're blessed. Luck, luck, is, luck is a word that the devil uses. Amen. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 just a beautiful thing. So we can get into the study sections of chapter one. Um, may there be understanding added to you guys out there that are following along. Um, it says. After King Solomon's death, the United Kingdom of Israel has split into rivalry, rivalry, rival, oh, split into rival, northern and southern kingdoms. The northern kingdom was called Israel. The southern Judah, Jeremiah, uh, Judah, Jeremiah was from Anathoth, four miles north of Jerusalem in the southern kingdom. He lived and prophesied during the reigns of the last five kings of Judah. This was a chaotic time politically, morally, and spiritually. What does that sound like? Sounds like today. Politically, morally, and spiritually. Amen. As, Bob, as Babylon, Egypt, and Assyria battled for world supremacy. What does that sound like? Only we have Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, and what else? Why? Battling for A lot of them the government. You know, you got the Republicans against the Democrats. Oh, yeah. You got the, you know, you got the KKK. They're going to rise up here soon. Soon try to take back their little piece of the pie. You know, it's just a whole bunch of demonic activity. Yeah. the government. And, and I'm not saying that to judge anybody. Like I said, we, we're truly praying for the government. Yes. Praying for the president. You know, praying for Trump. I mean, most people don't like it. Trump is actually God put Trump in office for a reason. And it's much bigger than what y'all think it is. It's spiritual. But if you're not if you're not walking in the spirit, you're not going to understand it. You're not going to see it. And you're going to want to argue. So but that's another whole other topic, like I said. Trump is not the, exactly the smartest man or the best man to be in office, but he's the one that God, the one that God chose for this time. So. We're not saying that to deport, support any of his decisions, but no. just mainly for the reason why he's there. But uh, so it says Judah found itself caught in the middle of the triangle. Although Jeremiah prophesied for forty years, he never saw his people heed his words and turn from their sins. My God, Hallelujah. 40 years of prophesying and people still not listening. That's just like you can tell people that, oh, it's a tornado coming or it's a big storm coming. Everybody going to hit the stores and get water and then get all the food and do all this and that. What? You tell them Jesus returning and nothing. nobody does anything. Not a word. They're like, oh, okay. You're crazy. I don't know how many, how many times I've been called crazy. But, Man. You know, it's confirmation. God said he's going to confirm it to through, through more than one source. I don't know how many other prophets have said the same things that are going on now. This we are the last generation, whether y'all want to believe it or not. Well, we're living in the last day. Amen. Everybody loves their life and everybody loves the way you know things have been going. But if you look outside, there's not this is not normal anymore. This is what you know, and they're even advertising. This is the new normal. They know it's not going back to the, the way it was because they, this was planned and it's part of prophecy. And even the demons know what the what the word of God says. Amen. They know they have a short period of time to do what they got to do. They're going to suck as many people in as they can. I'm just praying that, that you know, none of y'all that are watching or, or, or any of those people that are going to get sucked in. I've seen a lot of it. I've seen pastors get involved. And now they, they, they're picking a side. Okay, well, we, I'm black, so I'm going to stick with the black people. No, the word of God does not separate color. It doesn't. God said, I wish that none should perish. I came that all should come to repentance. All. Amen. All meaning all. It doesn't separate a color. It doesn't separate a race. The only thing it does, it does separate is a religion. Jesus Christ is the only way. All these other false religions, they talk about one religion. 
That's a negative. I'm not, I'm not going for it. You shouldn't either. It's in the Amen. Word of God. Amen. He goes on to say, God knew, God knew you as he knew Jeremiah long before you were born or even conceived. He thought about you and planned for you. When you feel discouraged or inadequate, remember that God has always thought of you as valuable and that he has a purpose in mind for you. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was ordained by God as his prophet to the nations. God has a purpose for each Christian, but some people are appointed by God for specific kinds of work. Sansom, John the Baptist, David, and Paul were also called to do particular jobs for God. Whatever work you do should be done for the glory of God. If God gives you a specific task, accept it and accept it cheerfully and do it with diligence. I mean, don't 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 come half stepping with God. Do it all the way. Be a hundred percent. If God has if God has not given you a specific call or assignment, then seek to fulfill the mission common to all believers: to love, obey, and serve God until His guidance becomes more clear. Amen. Often people struggle with new challenges because they lack self-confidence, feeling that they have inadequate ability, training, or experience. Jeremiah thought he was too young and inexper inexperienced to be God's prophet to the nations, but God promised to be with him. We should not allow feelings of inadequacy to keep us from obeying God. He will always be with us. If God gives you a job to do, he will provide all you need to do it. Amen. Amen. And he goes on to say, uh, study section for verses 7 through 10. In chapter 1 it says, God's message to Jeremiah was like his message to Moses. The God who made our mouths can provide the words he wants us to speak. Amen. Amen. That's why I pray for every time I speak to somebody or respond to somebody's post or whatever. Because I, you know, like I said, I get a lot of hateful response to my posts and stuff like that, which is okay, like I said, it's the Word of God, so the Word of God is going to defend itself, I don't really have to defend it, um, but if you truly want to know about Christ and you don't, you don't feel like you have a relationship with Him and you want to, you know, ask sincere questions, I'm, I'm always here, you can message me, you can, you know, whatever, I'm okay with that, but, you know, black, you know allow, listen to you blasphemy God, I'm not going to do so all those prophets, you know, those Pharisees in the back and all those Hebrew Israelites and all that that want to try to start arguments, I'll, you know, argue with yourself, I don't have time to I'm just gonna say I love you. Jesus loves you, and it's true. So I don't say I don't say anything to be funny. And pray for you. God, God, God love you too. Amen. He love everybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the verse eight study section says God promised to be with Jeremiah and take care of him, but not to keep trouble from coming. God did not insulate him from imprisonment, deportation, or insults. God does not keep us from encountering life storms but he will see us through them. In fact, God walks through these storms with us and rescues us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God appointed Jeremiah to bring his word to the nations and kingdoms. Jeremiah's work was, was to warn not only the Jews, but all the nations of the world that God's judgment about God's judgment for sin. Don't forget in reading the, reading the Old Testament that while God was consistently working through the people of Judah and Israel, his plans was to communicate to every nation and person. We are included in Jeremiah's message of judgment and hope. As believers, we are to share God's desire to reach the whole world for him. Amen. Amen. So that means you don't need to walk past that, that guy on that crackhead on the street that's white because he's white. Amen. And then go talk to the black guy. You know, he needs to talk to both of them. God, God gives you an assignment. It, it doesn't, it's not gender specific. It's not race specific. Amen. So you gotta need to go talk to people in general and tell them know that Jesus is coming. That's and right. You need to repent and he loves you. But at the end of the day he'll he'll love you. But if you're not part of you know what what his plan is, you will be destroyed when it's over, when it's all said and done. And that's just reality, that's the word of God. So I'm not it's not anything that's my opinion. You know, we don't give our opinion on these Bible studies. Everything's straight out the word of God. So Amen. Bible study is real. Amen. So verses 11 through 14 in chapter 1 study section says, The vision of the branch of an almond tree revealed the beginning of God's judgment because the almond tree is among the first to blossom in the spring. God saw the sins of Judah and the nations, and he would carry out swift and certain judgment. The boiling pot facing away from the north and spilling over Judah 
pictured Babylon delivering God's scalding judgment against Jeremiah's people. Oh my Lord. It's deep, it's deep. It says the problems we face may not seem as ominous as Jeremiah's, but they are critical to us and may overwhelm us. God promises to Jeremiah and to us that nothing will defeat us completely. He will help us through the most agonizing problems. Face each day with assurance that God will be with you and see you through. And the, Amen. The last study section, or verse 16 says, The people of Judah sinned greatly by continuing to worship other gods. God had commanded them specifically against this. Because idolatry places trust in created things rather than the Creator. Although these people belong to God, they chose to follow false gods. Many gods entice us to turn away from God. Material possessions, dreams for the future, approval of others, and vocational goals compete for our total commitment. Striving after these at the expense of our commitment to God puts our heart where Judas was, and God severely punished Judas. Amen. 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 So many, the thing is, the devil makes so many things nowadays that you can make your idol. Man. Telephone. Social media, all these things that people give all their Facebook. time to. People give all their time to all these different things, and yeah, um, we had, like I said, I, I I'm not I'm not perfect. I'm not above it. When I first realized that this telephone was a part of the devil's plan, this technology is not it's not this is not of God. It's something that the devil used to communicate all of this hate and anger and all those things. And that's that's what I was giving most of my time to. First thing in the morning, I would get on Facebook and say, okay. Let me post a scripture. Even though I was posting a scripture or something like that, it's still I was giving that phone time before I gave God time. Yeah. And I had to, you know, I had to, I had to repent. I had to tell, you know, tell God I'm sorry and you know, help me fix it. Because it was, it was such a habit. You know, everybody's phone is a habit. You don't ever see anybody go anywhere without their phone. If people leave without their phone, they'll stop everything they're doing to go back and get it. I know I used to be like that. I'd be halfway to work. Oh man, I forgot my phone. Mm -hmm. Got to go all the way back home and get it. I mean, that's that's how that's how how hypnotized people are by these electronics. Video games are the, probably the worst. Like I, my oldest son is I'm work, not as working on it now, but that PS5, 4, whatever it is, dude, when I say that consumes all of his time, free time, like it's crazy. Amen. Man, if you want to know more about that, the God of technology and demon uh, in the portals, on the wall, portals or however, uh, go to Revelations, Jesus Christ, uh, Revelations of Jesus Christ Ministries on YouTube. And they also have a website too, and it, it he's it's a Holy Spirit led ministry. We would not, we don't just listen to anybody. It has to be Holy Spirit led. And when you walk in the Spirit, you can tell what's what's a load of crap or what is good. One so thing, uh, you, we listen to Psalm ninety one. Amen. You play Bible scriptures at night. That that really man. It really help. It does. But I, right when my husband was talking. I mean, the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit. When you repent, repentance is just re-humbling yourself before the Lord. You have to remain humble. If you're not humble, the Lord can't use you. If your life doesn't support the way that God needs you to be, He can't use you. That's what repentance is. It's just it's an it's actual lifestyle change. It's not just saying, hey, God, I'm sorry, smoke a weed, then I'm going to go back and smoke weed tomorrow. That's not, that's, that means absolutely nothing. That's like, you know, God forbid a man hit his wife and then saying, I'm not going to do it again, and then the next day he does it again. It becomes, it starts to fall on deaf ears, guys. God starts to turn the deaf ear to what you're saying because he knows, he can see, you know, he already knows your heart anyway. Yeah. And he can see your thought. But when it comes out of your mouth, he expects you to honor, with, honor your word, just like he honored his. Everything, we look at the Bible, everything that came from God's mouth or Jesus' mouth, they honored it. You know what I mean? It, it came to pass because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. That's right. Words shape the world. Word, 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 words shape the world in the beginning, and they're going to destroy the world in the end. Think about it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. That's a, that was a revelation just now. Amen. The Word of God shaped the world. When Jesus comes back to destroy it, it's going to be with the Word of God. The sword that's coming out of his mouth is the Word of God. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, prof it's prophetic and it's a mirror. Everything that we do in between, everything we speak to our family, to our friends, or over our situation, is either life or death. You're speaking over your marriage. I hate my husband. He always does. He get on my nerves. You're speaking death over your spouse. You know I'm saying, you lift them up. I don't care what you see. Don't go by what you see. The Bible says you walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Go by what you want to, what your expectations are, not by what you see. My, my wife is a powerful woman of God. She is blessed. She's, a, you know, her career is 
wherever she, you know, wherever you want it to be or wherever she wants it to be. Uh, our children are blessed. Our children are walking, you know, walking with the Lord. Or our children are, you know, successful college graduates. Wherever you want them to be, you need to speak that over them. Or speak that over your situation, over your life. Because everything you say negative, that's speaking a curse over yourself or over your situation or over somebody else. Amen. That's why I got, you know, a lot of times I got to, even when I'm just ha having casual con conversation, I'm like, are oh, you crazy? I got to, I got to rebuke that because that's an actual word that I'm using to speak over somebody's life. And I got to cancel that out because that's not, that's not, you know, you don't want to call somebody crazy. Amen. You don't want to call somebody stupid. All those things are, those, those things will, will manifest themselves that through the word. You know what I mean? Amen. That Amen. Man, that was an awesome word. And you gotta tell the truth. And if, if you tell the truth, then give it to God. Let it die if I tell the truth. I will. I will. I will hold my hand to God. And God hold it to everything. Amen. I need y'all to get in y'all work. Because uh, we're living in the last hour. Amen. And I need y'all to do good and work. Do the right thing. Yep. We're living in the last hour, but don't. That, don't, that doesn't mean we're supposed to run for shelter. Right, right now, when God needs us the most, so the people that's watching that are true followers of Christ, we're not supposed to be sitting at the house watching things transpire. The Word of God says, you know, God gave us the power to do what He did. The Bible says, Jesus said in His own words, He who believes in me, these things that I do, you shall also do, but you'll do greater. So when they tell you that, that this social distancing is the way to secure the world, it's not. Jesus laid hands on people. He, didn't, he never social distanced. He never he walked amongst the lepers. He ate with the poor people, you know what I'm saying? He, he sat and talked to the children that were struggling. He, 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 people had demons he laid hands on, you know what I'm saying? He spoke to the, you know, spoke to the demon. He talked to him, said, you got, you know, according to her faith, be it unto her. You, know, you, you got, demons got to flee at his name. So all the stuff that, you know, this, this stuff is bigger than what people see. Social distancing is not about a virus. I can assure you it's, it's more, it's on a higher level than you'll ever be able to think without the, without the, you know, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So people that walk in the spirit, they see what's happening. They see what's going on. They're setting you up for, you know, a whole lot of things. Mark the Beast is coming. It's already here. Yeah. They're, they've already got it. They're just not telling yeah. us that. There's a chip already ready for you. There's a vaccine that's already going to accommodate oh, the chip. Goodness. You know what I mean? There's all these things that they're putting in place to wear a mask. you got to wear a mask. You can't come in 10 people at a time. All of that stuff is conditioned. They're yeah. conditioning your mind Taking to get ready. Taking the temperature. And if you look at all of these protests... These demonic protests where people are taking a knee, that, that is not about George Floyd. It's not about race. That is conditioning you to get ready to bow down to the Antichrist. Yep. And a lot of people are going to do it because they're already willing to do it now. Man, you see people across the world, Hong Kong, China, everywhere. Don't get me started, but mm -hmm. that regardless of, uh, when you get your life right with God, he blesses you with that discernment to see what's going on and to see everything, what, what it's for. And to, for you to be able to understand how to match things up with the Bible. The, what's the prophecy The prophecy that's written in the Bible that must be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't got a relationship with God and you ain't getting your word, you're not going to care what's going on. And you're going to be, you, God forbid, you're going to be the first one to go. You're going to be panicking when everything pop off and, and they tell you you got to take this uh, chip or, or you can't buy, sell, or eat. First time your stomach go, Rrr. You, I, I, I'm ready. No. Uh, a lot of people are going to do it, too. I pray that y'all don't. I mean, I, I, I truly bind and break every demonic force and spirit of witchcraft that that is going out with this whole agenda, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that storm that's coming from Africa, somebody told me it happens on a regular basis. And they got, you know, it's the media, man. You know, the media is built on lies. Y'all know that, right? You know that, y'all know that the elites own the media, right? A lot of people don't even, they just don't have no clue what they're being. And let, me, let me tell you a prophecy that another brother gave me. Um, the media, what they do is, when witches, what witches used to do, or what they still do, is they cast spells. Think about that word, cast. What, what does the media do? They broadcast. So everything they show you is a spell. Like this, all the, Everything they're showing you now is hatred and anger. And like that's the only thing that's going on in the world. And that's probably 1% of what's happening. They're, they're, they're conditioning you to be angry. They want you to go to sleep angry. I want you to wake up angry. Be, be mad at your neighbor because he's white or his parents used to own property that slaves lived on 500 years ago. All kind of stuff that, that just has nothing to do with what's going on. They, they're trying to destroy you from within. They're, they're going to create a civil war, which is going to give them the, the give them that, what's it called, the, the reason, the cause to bring in martial law. Yeah. Which everybody keeps, I've heard black people say, I'm ready for it. No, you really are not. 
you haven't studied martial law, you might want to. Because with the things that you can hold the cops accountable for, you can't hold the military accountable for nothing. Trust me, if they murder you, that's it. There's no higher power that you can go to. And they, they have they have probable cause, and anytime they feel like they need to use force, they can. There's no there is nobody over them that says no. Except mm -hmm. the president. But once he once they once he authorizes martial law, all that stuff is out the window. Yeah. So if they're killing you in the street like an animal, that's what it is. There's no more we're gonna march. You march, you're gonna die. Period. They, and they can come in your house. They have authority to come in your door and pull you out in the streets and do whatever they want. Mm. So people don't really know what martial law is, so you might want to study it. It's not something that you want to say, okay, I'm ready for it, because I'm not. Nope. I'm not ready for my freedom to be just snatched away, because I served in the military, I know. The government, they don't tell you half the stuff that they know. They don't tell you half the stuff that they can do. They don't, you don't know the kind of weapons that they have. They, they, you'll never know. I've seen weapons that y'all have no idea that the government has. They have, they have a handgun that can tear up a whole neighborhood. Why y'all y'all thinking that y'all gonna retaliate with nine millimeter or uh, you know M sixteen whatever those normal weapons are? They have me they have what's called weapons of mass destruction. They have guns. Wow, that's deep. It is it's facts though. Like I said, I'm not trying to scare nobody. Those are the facts. No, you don't fear nobody but God. The military, they they are they are they are put there for that reason. The military is designed to kill. Period. To protect, defend, and kill. That's it. They are not meant to be the police. And, and, you know, def defuse situations. They are meant to go in and destroy. And when they when they come into our neighborhoods, that's what they're gonna do. I need y'all. Well, but that's right. Just get right with God. More importantly, all that stuff I'm talking about is really irrelevant. But this, this prophecy is gonna happen. But you know, make sure you're right with God, because I seen a, you know a post from a Hebrew Israelite yesterday. You know, he said, you know, he's the one that said Jesus wasn't real. And then he turned around and said, I'm not taking the chip out. I'm gonna die for what I believe in. And you're gonna die and go straight to hell. What, what, what purpose does that serve you standing up for something? So, I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that are not going to believe in Jesus because for whatever they, they were raised to think or you know, the hatred that they have for slave owners who call themselves Christians, which is just a title. Well, it doesn't mean you not. follow Christ. It does not mean you're guaranteed to get into heaven. Amen. There's no one saved, always saved. All that stuff is a lie. You want to, God gives you salvation through grace. It's, it's up to you to hold on to that salvation. You can give it away by doing anything stupid. Pretty much. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. And I posted a post earlier. I, I hope everybody saw it. We all do a lot of dumb things in life. Going to hell doesn't have to be one of them. You got to, you have a you have free choice. Make that decision. Give your life to Christ. And do what you got to do. Stay right with God. You know, get ready for this persecution that's coming. To, you know, to, it's to, already to, here. To, to live for Christ is to die for Christ. But the great the reward is greater than the punishment. Okay. Don't take them off the Amen. Amen. Love y'all, Rachel. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and your family. Anybody else who's watching has been on, we, you know, we love y'all. We love all of y'all. Pray for y'all dearly. We yeah. care about where your souls go when you take your last breath. Serve God while he may be found. The, the get in your found, word. No get in your word. You're right. The God we serve knows no defeat. Who? Get in your That's word. Right. Get in your word while you can. Because pretty soon it's going to be illegal to have a Bible. Exactly. And if it's not written. Okay. It's not written. It's, it's, in the it's not written on your heart, then. I mean, come That's on right. now. I doubt the Bible. I was going to say, actually, there's a scripture that uh, Brother brother Service brought, uh, brought to our attention. I, I, I don't remember which one it is, but I'll bring it up and I'll post it. But it even says there was a time where God made all the pages on the Bible disappear. Like the Word of God, because nobody was used. Nobody was adhering to it anyway. So they were like, God was like, okay, if you're not going to use it, I'm going to take it away. And if it's not in your heart, what are you going to do then? So it was very important for you, for us to get the Word of God and sow it on our heart, because these things will be illegal soon. You know, I don't know if y'all saw the report today, but they already, this uh, this known Satanist is already talking about taking down statues of Jesus because it represents oppression. Go figure. Jesus was oppressed more than anybody. He was he was the one that died and you know, died and got crucified for us. You know, and I, I, we can get deeper into that too. Everybody just knows the bare bones. Jesus was nailed to a cross, but they don't know that Jesus shed his blood seven different times during that crucifixion, which was probably a 24-hour process. He didn't just bleed one time. He bled seven different times, all the way, all the way up to the, the cross. And so it's, I mean, it's very deep. It's deeper than Amen. you ever know unless you get in His Word and study for yourself. Amen. Um, Jesus is love. So if you don't, if you represent a, a, a religion that's not Jesus, you are not, you are not, um, you're not walking in love. You're not walking in righteousness. You're not walking in the truth. And somebody's lying to you. And I'm just gonna tell you straight up. You can be, you can hate me. You can think whatever you want. The Word of God is the truth, and every other man is a lie. These, these false prophets keep telling you what they're telling you. They're going to lead you to hell. And they're going to go with you if you don't repent. 
I'm not saying I'm not biased when I say that because I've studied religions. I studied yeah. every one of them in depth. I had to do reports and actually go interview people that, that are Muslims or Hebrews or something like that. They say they 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 they, they believe in the Bible. 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 They believe He's about the human race. Everybody's, the Jews and the Gentiles are all, you know, saved by grace. All you got to do is accept it. If you don't, that's Man. on you. That's your free will. That's your free choice. For those people that keep saying that, you know, if there's, a, if God was real, he wouldn't allow th these things to happen. God is, God is giving us free will. And the, the, the devil is the God of the earth right now, the God of the world. God is the, God is the God of the earth and the fullness thereof, but he's giving us free reign, reign to choose him over the things of the world or Satan. So the Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That means the good and the, the good people and the bad people are going to deal with stuff. We deal with stuff just like y'all do. We don't feel like we're anybody better than anybody else. We are definitely saved. We, we definitely feel like we line up with the saint as opposed to the sinner, which we can give you the definition of, which makes those two, di two different things or whatever. Everybody sins, but everybody's not a sinner. A sinner is somebody who practices sin knowingly and keeps doing it willingly. Somebody who's a saint. I may, I may fall down, I may sin, but you know, I know I got sense enough to get back up and repent, ask God for, for forgiveness, and turn a different direction and not keep doing the same thing over and over. Hey, don't about your business. Yeah. That doesn't make us better than you, that just makes us make better decisions. If you make a choice to be a sinner, you know, fall into sin, that's your choice. It's not a good choice, but that's your choice. Amen. So, anyway, we love y'all. Um, hopefully, tomorrow, God willing, we'll tomorrow start on chapter promise. two. Jeremiah chapter 2, and I said it gets better. Chapter 1 was good, but as it goes on, you'll see how powerful Jeremiah was through, through God, through the Amen. Holy Spirit. God yeah, should have used him. Even when he was in prison, Jeremiah was still yelling out the prison walls and prison doors and prison bars telling people to repent, and they still didn't listen to him. And everything that he said was going to happen, that God told him was going to happen, it happened. He told a man that tried to take God's son, you know, try to take God's, uh, his glory, and try to say he was the one that was doing all these good things, Jeremiah told him, if you don't repent, you'll be dead in a year. And he dropped dead in exactly a year. So God is not going to, he's not to be mocked, he's not to be played with. Amen. If he says something's going to happen, he's going to honor his word. Just like if he, say you, if he says you're healed, he's going to honor his word. You, got, you have to have the faith to believe it. The Bible said, according to your faith, be that to you. So Amen. That being said, we're going to go ahead and pray out. We love y'all. Right, can I join us tomorrow, God willing, if we're still here, no, the most of the land of living, if you know, live is still working. If they don't shut us down, whatever they do, throw us in Facebook jail, whatever it is they do, you know, we're doing right now. We'll be back. So Amen. Can I, can I pray out? Yes, we'll let you pray out, darling. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm daddy, darling. Amen. Yeah, I am. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the day. Thank you, Lord, for everybody in the name of Jesus. I'm the Father in the name of Jesus. Pray that they did this word in the name of Jesus. And we'll pray for everything. We'll pray for everybody in the name of Jesus. We'll thank you, Lord, for them. We'll thank you, Lord, for that family, that children, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I'm perfect in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we love you guys. And thank you uh, praying Rachel. for y'all to continue to. Hey, Cassandra. Cassandra, I love you. Uh, praying for you guys to get closer to God and seek Him while He may be found. Getting your word, getting your word, getting your word. Bless, bless the Holy Pray for the Holy Spirit to be your teacher. Amen. All these things. Yes, man. man. Let's walk in love, y'all. Yes, walk Lord. In love. All this stuff, walk a lot of hate going on. Let's pray against all this hate. Let's get out and hug some people, love some people. Amen. Amen. Walking love. Walk Amen. Y'all have a good one. Amen. Love y'all.